for my Victober wrap up. So, um, it should come as no surprise that I was way too ambitious um, with my Victober TBR, and especially this year with just how I've been so um, fatigued and just, you know, under the weather. I think I should have even made my TBR even less. Uh, so I did get really overwhelmed and at the last week I really didn't read too much. So I'm going to um, keep that in mind for next year and try to just, you know, enjoy whatever I read, not put so much pressure on myself. That all being said though, I did really enjoy the reading that I did do, most of the reading that I did do, and I had um, some new favorites that I found. So without further ado, my Victober wrap up. Uh, the first is The Trail of the Serpent by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. So in case you hadn't figured out before, we are going um, in order of least to most favorite this Victober. This was by far my least favorite. I had very high hopes for this because I loved Lady Audley's Secret, but I reminded myself she wrote, Mary Elizabeth Braddon wrote 97 novels, so I can't expect to love all 97 of them, and that did make me feel somewhat better. Um, this was just a big, giant mess. This was her first novel. It features a mute detective and then a really despicable character who already I can't, ah, Jabez North. I, his name had, I had already forgotten it. Anyhow, um, so featured a really despicable character. Um, this was a major disappointment because about 70% of this featured Jabez North. And he is the villain. He has no nuance to him. He has no redeeming qualities. He is just pure evil. And so to follow a villain that is pure evil for 70% of a book is really not that interesting and kind of repetitive and kind of plotting. The 30% of the book that featured um, Peters, I can't, Joseph Peters, that's what it is, um, the mute detective, I absolutely loved. He was such a cool character. He had lots of personality. He was uh, really just like sharp and um really was, you know, on to, on to things, suspicious that uh, the person they arrest for Jabez's murder was not, you know, the guilty party. Uh, but he was only in about 30% of the book. So if it had flip-flopped, I think I actually could have really liked this if 70% of this was about the detective Ju Joseph Peters, but it was not that. And so what made it especially disappointing is the first six chapters, I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And everyone in the buddy reads that they were really enjoying it. And then after that, it all went downhill from there. Uh, so yeah, I really skim read the last portion and I will not be returning to this. Now I can say I read her first novel. You know, now I only have 95 more to go. <laughs> um, next on the list was Zoe by Geraldine Jewsbury. This was very much a steady three-star read throughout. And if I'm reading more modern literature, I think I'm less harsh on it. But when I'm reading Victorian literature, since I know that are some that are going to be lifelong favorites that I read, I am a lot more dissatisfied with this three-star read. So this follows Zoe and her life story. Um, I buddy read this with Katie from Books and Things, and she uh, suggested the idea that there is about, there's a climax kind of halfway through this of what if the book had ended there. And I, once I started thinking about it, I think that actually would have been a really great ending because then it just felt really kind of meandering and plotting and like she didn't really know what she wanted the book to do. So the writing was adequate. Um, there weren't really many characters that I connected with and I just wasn't that invested in the book. So yeah, I, I don't think I'll be returning to this and I prefer the half sisters over that. Uh, then on to the ones that I definitely enjoyed. Uh, so the first is The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. <sighs> this was a really, really just fun, fun read. Um, this had me on the edge of my seat. Uh, it starts out where one night when our main character, Michael Henchard, is drunk. He is at a, like a little... Um, there's like a little fair with a bunch of, you know, different food tents and things. And he sells his wife and daughter. And 
doesn't realize what he's doing because he is drunk. And uh, it's just follows the events of like 20 years after that. Um, I, it's, it was a really compelling one with lots of surprises. And I didn't think I was that emotionally invested until the end. And Thomas Hardy just kicks such an emotional punch in his books. And um, yeah, I definitely enjoy this one. And if you want a really like plot heavy Thomas Hardy, read this instead of Desperate Remedies. Um, yes, definitely enjoyed this. Okay, moving on. And that is The Small House at Allington by Anthony Trollope. So let me start off by saying I definitely enjoyed this. But I have realized with Anthony Trollope's books that his characters feel somewhat aloof when I'm reading them. I don't know what it is about his books, but they do. The one that I felt the most connected to the characters was in Framley Parsonage, um, which is the only Anthony Trollope book that I read not during Victober. So my theory is that um, I really enjoy his books, but I don't feel nearly as much of an emotional connection to characters in his as I do in other Victorian novels. Um, and so that I really do enjoy his books, but I'm more amused by them. I'm more um, interested to see what happens as opposed to really feeling like these characters are, you know, full flesh and blood. So I think I will definitely not read, um, the next Anthony Trollope book I read will not be during Victober. I think I enjoy him, but I enjoy him in a different way that I enjoy most other Victorian books like Elizabeth Gaskell or, um, Jane Eyre. I just experience his, his books differently and they feel very different. Um, so yes, I definitely enjoyed this. Um, I, I really enjoyed getting to know the sisters, Lily and Belle. Um, and you kind of see, uh, they just, it's very typical Anthony Trollope. There are suitors and some unsuitable suitors and you're just kind of following uh, the comings and goings uh, in this little house and uh, different big decisions that the characters are left with. So yes, it was definitely enjoyable. I would say though, Framley Parsonage is still my favorite. Okay, then the next three are tied. The next three are tied as far as enjoyment goes. Uh, the first is Deerbrook. And uh, this is totally, utterly, absolutely a new favorite. I'm so pleased that Ange from Beyond the Pages, um, you know, she just talked about how much she enjoyed it. And so that was what made me pick it up. This is the story of two sisters, Hester and Margaret, who after their parents pass away, they move in with some cousins in this little town of Deerbrook. It's a very small, tight knit community and very different from the big city. Uh, they were living in Manchester before that or Birmingham. That's where it is. Anyhow, they arrive in this town and there's a couple eligible men in the town. So you can kind of guess, uh, you know, some of the things that might happen with that. But what I loved most about this is that this is a, a book where characters, uh, you know, a lot of people like to talk about post-traumatic post stress disorder, which obviously that's a thing, but uh, people don't talk about as much. Um, post-traumatic growth, which does happen with a lot of people. And so I love seeing that in stories when characters go through really hard times and really unfair circumstances and they rise above the occasion and they are just um, stronger people for it uh, after that. So yes, this, this book really endeared itself to me. And I don't know if Harriet Martineau uh, wrote many other novels. I, I'd be curious to look into that, but this is a new dear favorite and I just, I love it so much. Highly recommend it. Uh, then next on the list is Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. I was worried. This is my last Elizabeth Gaskell I hadn't read, but she did not disappoint me. And if you watch my video of my Elizabeth Gaskell uh, books in order of you know, least favorite to most favorite, this surpassed Sylvia's Lovers, which I didn't think, um, you know, it would. I love Sylvia's Lovers, but then that speaks to how much I love this. Um, and this takes place in Manchester, um, deals a lot with poverty and industrialization. Mary is our protagonist. And um, 
there's a lot in this book. Um, there's a little bit of everything, but there is uh, kind of um, some really dramatic events that happen. There is uh, an investigation that happens and it's just a very, very edge of your seat read. And it was a really fun group that I read it with. I read it with Katie from uh, Life Between Words, uh, Adam from Memento Mori, Kate from the novel Nomad, and um, Doris from Aldi Books. And it was really neat to, um, we all had such a variety of Victorian literature experience. And so it was a really just spectacular group to read with because everyone had Kind of was going in with a different different idea of what it would be like yes so that was definitely enjoyable and then the third book that is up there for that you know way up there uh way up there position is david copperfield uh by charles dickens uh the last dickens that uh i read was our mutual friend and i you know i say that i kind of ruined that experience because i read it in a week um but before that it was nicholas nickleby and i did not enjoy that so I was really pleased. This is a new favorite Dickens. I absolutely loved it. Uh, it's just, you know, kind of a life story of David Copperfield and you follow him uh, as a boy who is um, really trying to make his way in the world. And the side characters in this are some of the most memorable. Uh, Betsy Trotwood is his aunt and she's just such a funny, like so grumpy on the outside, but just such a warm person in re in reality and um the romance in this wasn't necessarily my favorite but um i still adored this book so that speaks to you know how much i liked it if i didn't really if i wasn't like crazy about the romance so yes this was one that i really liked it was a really neat mixture where it had kind of a dark tone to it but it was still really warm at the same time. It was just a very special Dickens. So I'm kind of finding with Dickens books that I either like them or I don't. Um, <clears throat> Our Mutual Friend is the only one where I feel like I liked it, but I, I ruined it with the reading experience. Um, Nicholas Nickleby, um, Little Dorrit, A Tale of Two Cities are all ones that I don't like. And then I like Oliver Twist, Great Expectations, Dombey and Son. Um, I know there's one more that I'm forgetting in there. Anyhow, I am really looking forward to continuing on with Dickens now. This has spurred me on. Um, I think, though, the next one I'm going to tackle is Barnaby Rudge, which I know is not supposed to be one of his, like, really iconic ones, but I think just kind of I want to get it over with. <laughs> um, and then after that and Martin Chuzzlewit, the other ones are a lot shorter. So I think Barnaby Rudge will be my next one and then Martin Tuzzlewit because eventually I want to get back, I want to finish them all just so I can reread Great Expectations. I've really been wanting to reread it but I'm not letting myself until I finish all his other books. So then my favorite read of Victober was Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte and this was a reread but I don't mind. I think I can still count it as my favorite because I had no idea how much more I would love this the second time around. Um, this one is really hard for me to talk about, though, because it's so immersive and so experiential when you're reading it that when you come out of it, and you kind of come up for air. I just kind of find my thoughts very scattered. I buddy read this with Katie from um, Katie's Book Nook and Doris from Aldi Books, and it was a really fun experience reading with both those ladies. And, um, gosh, I mean, what to say about this book? It, it, I don't, I don't think I know anyone who said they were sort of okay with it. I think I just know people who love it or hate it. Um, it's about a lot of really terrible people who do terrible things to one another. But I think the main thing that I love about this book is they feel things very deeply and, I just think in a lot of books where um, characters feel kind of, what do I want to say, like formulaic, these characters feel so unformulaic and just so real and gritty and honest. And something about this book, I, there's a, there's a quote from uh, Emma by Jane Austen where a character says, if I loved you more, I could talk about, uh, 
if I loved you less, I could talk about it more. And so that's how I feel about this book. I, I don't know what else to say about it, but I just utterly adore this book. So I can't wait to reread it again already. But um, I definitely will wait a little while because it is a very intense reading experience. So all in all, even though I did have way too many books on my Victober TBR, the books that I did read, I really enjoyed. And so I hope you guys all had a great Victober. Thank you so much for all of the lovely comments you've left. I'm sorry, I never do as good commenting on Victober videos just because I usually upload more in that time. Plus, I've just been so tired lately. So bear with me uh, in this time. And I will see you guys for another video soon. Bye.